Hello everyone, my name is William C. Hart of the Syndicus organization. Me and my two friends, Kemal Rifki and Ariel Andika, has created an organization dedicated to helping the Japanese rhinos. To achieve this, we created Sundecus, named after the scientific term of the Japanese rhino, which is Sundecus rhinosaurus. Our organization works closely with the members of the conservation efforts at the home of the Japanese rhinos in the Ujung Kulon National Park under the Indonesian Ministry of Environment. What brought us together is that we both have the same goal, which is to help the Javanese rhinos and make sure that they don't go extinct. We work very closely with a man named Mr. Yudi, who works for the Indonesian Ministry of Environment at the Ujung Kulon National Park Reserve. With the guidance of Mr. Yudi, we were able to plan a trip to go to Ujung Kulon National Park to see the conditions and environment that the Javanese rhinos were in. There, we met up with another person, which is Mr. Momo an employee of the Indonesian Ministry of Environment and plays as a leading role in the Pechuang Island. The Javan rhinoceros, also known as the Sunda rhinoceros or lesser one-horned rhinoceros, is a very rare member of the family Rhinoceratidae and one of five extant rhinoceroses. The first studies of the Javan rhinoceros by naturalists from outside of its region took place in 1787, when two animals were shot in Java. The skulls were sent to the renowned Dutch naturalist Petrus Kamper, who died in 1789 before he was able to publish his discovery that the rhinos of Java were a distinct species. In the home turf, the Ujung Kulon Peninsula of Java was devastated by the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883. The Javan rhinoceros recolonized the peninsula after the event, but humans never returned in large numbers, thus creating a haven for wildlife. In 1931, as the Javan rhinoceros was on the brink of extinction in Sumatra, the government of the Dutch East Indies declared the rhino a legally protected species, which it has remained ever since. Although the rhinos in Ujung Kulon have no natural predators, they have to compete for scarce resources with wild cattle, which may keep their numbers below the peninsula's carrying capacity. Once widespread in Southeast Asia, the Javan rhinoceros was presumed extinct in Vietnam in the mid-1970s, at the end of the Vietnam War. The combat wrought havoc on the ecosystems of the region through use of napalm. Extensive defoliation from Agent Orange, aerial bombing, use of landmines, and overhunting by local poachers. The Javan Rhino is now confined to the lengths of Ujung Kulon National Park, located in Banten Province on the extreme southwest tip of the highly populated island of Java, has the best and most extensive lowland forest remaining on the island. Throughout natural disasters, centuries of human tampering, and a final realization, all there left are a small population in the peninsula, a population of 67. 67 animals for what was once the most widespread species of rhinoceros in the world. This is it. All 67 rhinos. All 67 left. All 67 is not enough. To understand the true scale of this ecological issue, we go directly to the Ujung Kulon Peninsula. Our trip, which starts with a six-hour bus trip from the capital, takes us to Sumor, a fishing town on the southeasternmost point of Java accessible by road. We then venture to the national park, specifically to the Pechuang Island, the ground of operations for ecological projects in the peninsula. In a visit from Pechuang Island, we were able to interview a resident, world-renowned photographer. He works for the Ujung Kulon administration and cooperates with countless conservation groups from the World Wildlife Foundation, the International Rhino Foundation, and many others. In addition, sections of the interview had been censored due to the private nature of the specific information. Gracias.
menjelaskan apa kondisi badan yang ada di ujung kolon dan apa saja prosesnya yang sudah dilakukan untuk badak-badak ini. Kalau proses badak Jawa yang sudah diperbatukan oleh termasuk dari modal datur apa dari mana gitu kan? Iya. Kalau dari donatur itu ada dari Yayasan Badak Indonesia itu donaturnya dari luar banyak gitu. Ada dari Sinde kan, ada membantu untuk keberlangsungan uh, badak Jawa. Gitu. Terus untuk proses uh, apa namanya? Untuk keberlangsungan itu ada beberapa tip yang untuk uh, monitoring. Salah satunya RPU untuk protection. Yang kedua RMU, RMU untuk monitoring unit itu untuk pemasangan video trap itu yang sampai sekarang masih berjalan setiap bulannya itu berjalan sampai setahun baru di jenis nanti masalah apa aja yang dialami oleh ujung kolon sekarang mengenai badak? kalau masalah yang mungkin hanya kalau masalah dari untuk badak bukan ke saya sebenarnya maksudnya ya ke pelar resort harusnya saat tadi malam ke pamumu Nah, sebenarnya dari tahun 90 sampai 99 sampai tahun 2000 itu diperkirakan kalau dulu kan hanya menghitung secara sengkel, sengkel itu dari per tahun aja yang ukurnya satu tahun itu kalau nggak salah satu kali untuk pengecekan sensus namanya sensus badak. Jadi menggunakan alat-alat sederhana lah istilahnya, alat manual semua konsentrasi. konsentrasi. Jadi kita di situ ada 15 tansek artinya 15 transek itu ujung kulon itu dipotong dari utara sampai selatan itu ada jalur treknya 15 transek jadi dulu itu setiap tahun hanya sekali untuk monitoringnya jadi hanya sekedar itu pun manual jadi hanya mencari jejak kotoran gesekan makanan jadi dalam 15 tim itu disebar kalau dulu makanya disinkronkan kadang-kadang tidak akurat makanya populasi tidak terlihat banyak paling ditemukan hanya 40 sampai 43 paling banyak kalau sekarang karena udah udah ada teknologi canggih akhirnya semakin sini semakin bagus dengan perkembangan zaman teknologi akhirnya sangat mudah lah dideteksi makanya akhirnya disimpulkan sama uh, balai dengan Pak Dirjen akhirnya menjadi 67 ekor untuk 2017 sampai 2018 hasilnya From this interview, we conclude three fundamental truths. First being, first of all, the Javanese rhino population has decreased since human tampering since the 1800s under the Dutch government and since the 1933, various efforts to stop this had been placed. Second, being even not explicitly stated, problems faced in the current state includes the lack of data related to the well-being of these rhino. A security-related issue with engines stripped out of medium-sized patrol boats, limiting them to small one-man patrol boats and complications of government funds. Third, being data-gathered methods had been increased in recent years, especially by dividing the geography of Ujukolan into 15 square kilometers. Every year or so, a survey would be conducted with the sole purpose of counting up the exact amount of rhinos in the national park. Personally, he had joined with the RSU team conducting the census a few years back. We were also informed that recently there had been a theft. Someone had stolen the machines for the boats they were, they were using. Therefore, they are unable to use the boats and resulting in the fact that they are unable to travel from island to island. The reason why the boat is very important is because they need it to travel from island to island and sometimes to catch poachers or people who are trying to damage the park. During our trip to the Ujukola National Park, our associate, Mr. Yudi, educated us on the many reasons as to why it is very difficult to breed the Japanese rhinos. According to Mr. Yudi, one of the reasons on why it is very difficult to breed the Javanese rhinos is the ecological location of the Ujungkulon National Park. The Ujungkulon National Park is, the tro is a tropical rainforest, therefore there are many trees that are covering the area. Due to all the trees covering the area, it makes it very difficult to spot the Javanese rhinos. In parts of Africa, 
One of the methods they use to breed the rhinoceros is by transferring all the rhinoceros to a breeding facility. The Uji Kaur National Park has also tried doing this method, method but it sadly is unsuccessful. In Africa, the ecological location is a savanna type, making it very easy to spot the rhinos when in a helicopter, while in Ujung Kulon, it's the rainforest type, making it very difficult to spot the rhinos because they are all covered by the trees. Another reason why it is very difficult to breed the Japanese rhinos is because rhinos are like humans. They are very shy. They isolate themselves alone and live alone for most of their lives. They rarely meet, and when they do, they barely breed. Moreover, in breeding in the 60 or so something population could also be a possible issue due to the small population and area they encompass as their habitat. Basically, what this means is that because there are so little rhinos and the area they live in is so large, it is rare for one rhino to meet another. And when they do meet one another, they tend to be very shy with one another, therefore pre preventing them from breeding. Until the late 19th century and early 20th century, Javan rhinos existed from the northeast India and the Sundarbans throughout mainland Southeast Asia and on the island of Sumatra. If we lose the population in Java, the entire species will disappear. Preservation activities have been carried out at Ujung Kulon, but since all of the rhinoceroses are together in just one location, there is a danger of them being wiped out in a single disaster or outbreak of disease. Because the threat of extinction is so critical, some of these animals will need to be removed and taken to a new safe location. While in the area, our team visited the Chidawan Pastoral Field, a groundwork for a planned project in the Ujung Kulan National Park, with the plans of relocating the 67th size population in Ujung Kulan to a more suitable environment, where monitoring is possible and physical and mental state of animals could be monitored from internal organs, stress, mating rituals, and such. This is vital to the conservation efforts because of where they are placed in currently, the Ujung Kola National Park. While seemingly just a patch of open land, this would be the center of the rhino's relocation process. Rhinos are currently scattered all over the hundreds of square kilometers in the Ujung Kola Park Peninsula. Moreover, through the rising tides, pollution, terrorism, tourism, and general human tampering, this place would become less and less safe for the shy Javanese rhinoceros. And in the fear of another Krakatoa-like eruption, a tsunami, or an earthquake, the rhinos are threatened, which calls for change in the form of relocation. This is done by first of all decreasing the ab habitat area naturally, through mental cues allowing the rhino's path to intercept the field. Once in the field, it is hopefully encapsulated and extracted to its new habitat. Therefore, it is very important that we all work together to help the Japanese rhinos and make sure that they don't go extinct. At first, we only view Sundekas as a community and service project for our school. However, after realizing about how critical the situation is, we realized that we cannot ignore this as the rhinos, people of, of Ujung Kulan, and most importantly, our nation is calling to us for help. Due to these reasons, we became passionately inspired and planned on further expanding Sundekas, even though our community and service project is over. We hope that in the future, we are able to reach our goals and make sure that the Javanese rhinos never become extinct. Please support Sundekas on www.sundekas.org. Thank you.